Right guys, in my business, which is the fencing business, uh, one of the most common tools that I use is the first fix nail gun. Uh, I use two types, I've got the DeWalt DCN692 and I've got the Pathload IM350. Uh, this video, I'm going to run through the, the benefits of each gun and also the downsides of each gun. Uh, they're quite close in comparison, uh, but there are some major differences and I'll explain that as best I can in this video. Hopefully you find it interesting. Right guys, thank you. Okay, so predominantly for fencing, the nail guns that I use are the DeWalt and the Pazload. Yeah, this is the DeWalt DCN692 and this is the Pazload IM350 Plus Impulse. Now these are both first fix nail guns and in this video I'm going to run through the benefits of each and the, the drawbacks of each. Okay, I'll run through the, the pros or the good points of the, the Pazload nail gun now. Uh, firstly, as you can see, it comes in a great, you know, secure case and in the case it comes with obviously the gun, a couple of canisters of gas, one battery, this is actually a spare that I added to the case and full set of instructions. And also there's an Allen key there for breaking the tool, you know, if you, if you get a nail jam. Mm. The overriding reason that I bought this gun was basically down to the weight. This is a lot lighter than the, the DeWalt guns. Um, I've spent a few years with a couple of, you know, the DeWalt first fix nail guns and then switched the pass load uh, about a year ago roughly. Just purely down to the weight. You know, you can feel yourself getting pretty fatigued at the end of the day when you're using this all day. Whereas this, you know, less so. So it's a huge plus for the pass load. Another plus point for the pass load, in my opinion, is the, the power. Um, I mean, you can put 90 millimeter ring shank nails in there in the sink, you know, first time, every time. You know, no problem at all. Uh, even the 50 mil nails that I use most commonly, you know, you can just feel the power uh, when you use this gun. I mean, this gun's fine, but especially with the 90 millimeter nails, it, it can be slightly underpowered and you can get, you know, the nails not being driven in far enough. But there's no such issue with this. Uh, another plus for the pass load is the the nose cone, it's just it's more aggressive and um, you get a better grip, especially if you're toenailing, um, you can just, it seems to, you know, grip the, the timber a lot better. Yes, yeah, so this hook, once in position, it's like really solid, you know, there's no moving that, so you can, you know, hang it, bump it and it won't move. The Dwalt one, however, you know, slightest little touch. You know, it just seems to get out of position and it can be a pain, you know, if you move it and you try to hang it, you know, especially if you're holding something with the other hand. Um, the other thing's the clearance. It's maybe not too obvious there. But I think if you look at that distance from there to the edge of the hook, you know, if you've got a, a sort of rafter, well, there's not that much clearance there, to be honest. You have to sort of tilt the gun to, to get it hung up. Whereas the pass load, if you look at the edge of the gun down there, there's a lot more room there. So it just tends to hang on things easier. Again, just personal preference, but it's something I've noticed, you know, over time by using these two guns. That's definitely better. Now, downsides of the pass load. Obviously, it needs canisters of gas. So you, you do have an extra cost there. So you're roughly four pounds per canister which does you roughly a thousand nails. So every thousand nails that you're firing is going to cost you four pounds. It doesn't seem a lot, but when you're firing thousands and thousands of nails, and that can add up over the course of a year. So the cost of the gas, whereas the DeWalt, it doesn't use any gas whatsoever, it just uses the battery. Another downside for the pass load is the noise. Um, it's really loud. I liken it to a firing a 2-2 rimfire, you know, rifle if you like. You know, it is a, quite a sharp crack and you really need to wear ear defenders with that. Whereas the DeWalt, it's, a, it's more of a dull sort of thud. Another one, on the topic of gas, um, there's no pre-warning. Uh, with the pass load when the gas is running low. Um, you know, it just seems to 
play up or misfire and then all of a sudden it just doesn't work so you just don't know when the gas is going to run out so it would be good to see if there's some sort of indicator I don't know if that's feasible but some sort of indicator on the new guns in the future you know how much gas you've got left because it just cuts out without warning whereas obviously with the DeWalt you've got none of that no, none of that issues another one uh, the DeWalt has bump fire mode pass load doesn't Pass load, you have to depress it and fire manually every time, whereas the DeWalt does have bump fire. So you can just bump, 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 and whilst holding the trigger down. Another downside of the pass load is the, the need for servicing. You really need to service this gun, um, which basically means breaking the thing apart, cleaning out the interior, the, you know, the, the combustion chamber, giving it a good oil, uh, put it all back together, you know, just to to service it. I'll do another video on how I service uh, this in the future but that does need to be done fairly regularly if you don't you tend to find this it just starts playing up um, you know the, the firing pin sticks you know I've had a couple of occasions where it's let me down <laughs> at the worst One of the reasons I always carry a spare nail gun with me, and it's always a DeWalt. Um, but yeah, you need to service that. This, you don't really need to service it um, as such. There are a couple of springs in there for the firing pin, which could do with getting renewed every couple of years. Uh, but that's fairly easy to do. And again, I'll probably do a video on that as well, just to show you. In summary, you need to service this pretty regularly. This, you don't. Another one, I don't mean to be too down in the pass load, I love this gun, um, but I'm just being transparent. But another downside is the cost, you know, the purchase price. Uh, for a bare unit, for the DeWalt, you're looking at roughly £300. Um, for the pass load, roughly £500, so nearly double the price. Another comparison that needs to be made is the batteries. Both guns need a battery. Um, the DeWalt's battery, obviously, you know, creates the fly the spin of the y wheel, fly wheel to create the power for the nail gun. The Paslo's battery, on the other hand, only operates the, the cooling fan um, or initiates the spark, I think, for the... I'm not an expert, but I think that's what it does. So it's just a small battery. Uh, the one gripe I've got with that, there's no indicator. There's no battery indicator on this. Now, I'll take this out. So there's the Paslo battery. As you can see, no indicator. And the DeWalt battery, obviously, as with all the DeWalt batteries, just press the button, you can see the clear indicator there. It's not a massive issue, that, but it would be nice to see an indicator on here. Another thing to say is if you do get a nail jam, you need an Allen key to release the, those two bolts. You can see them either side, beside that orange tabs down below. Release those, break the gun and that, that releases the jam. One small niggly little thing, there's nowhere on the gun to hold the, the Allen key. The DeWalt, it's the same, pretty much the same process. A couple of Allen key bolts there, which need undone. Yeah, and that normally clears your jam. You can sometimes use this, which will clear a jam. Very rarely though, you, you, you do tend to have to break the gun to, to clear a, a good jam. Uh, but at least on the DeWalt, there is a, if you can see in there, there is an area there where the Allen key is held on the tool. So if you're on the job and you get a jam, just you've got the Allen key to hand. The pass load on the other hand, you don't. Um, it is obviously stored in the case, uh, so if you've got the case on the job with you, or in my case, I always leave this in the van, so you've got to go traipsing away and get the key. Uh, so just a small niggly little thing from my perspective. So in summary, you may think I'm just being totally negative with the puzzle load, but I'm not, not in any way. Um, I'm just trying to point out some of the flaws, you know, with, with both guns really. Uh, the biggest flaw with the DeWalt is the weight, it's really heavy. You know, as with all battery-operated nail guns, you know, you've got the, 
uh, the Milwaukee, the Hitachi, all these sort of guns. They're all really heavy. Pars load ones, you know, hands down for weight. Power, pars load, fantastic. Great power, Dewalt. Does the job, but not so much, especially with 90 millimeter nails. You may ask, like, what do I prefer? I'll be honest, I've got a soft spot for the Dewalt because I've used them for years. I've, I've got a couple of these. Um, but I do, on larger jobs, I always use the pars load just because of the weight. Uh, but I'll always carry a spare Dewalt with me. Uh, for the smaller jobs, I'll always grab a Dewalt. It's just easier, you know. Chuck a battery in and go. There's no faffing about with the other battery, gas, you know, all that sort of stuff. So I tend to use this. Um, but, but for me, and it's only my opinion, um, I'll carry both guns on the van. I'll take this for the larger jobs. I'll always have this as a backup, and I've also got another one in the workshop. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully, the video gave you a, an overview of both guns, pros and cons of each. Uh, in the future, I'll be keeping both guns uh, going forward as they both have their benefits. Yeah, but thanks again guys, give the video a like if you can, please subscribe if you're new here, hit the bell for the notifications, that'll notify you when I upload more videos, and take it easy guys, as always, all the best, thanks, cheers.